hello dear student i hope you guys are doing absolutely fine in this lecture we will learn about blood as a biological evidence we will see how blood can be used as an evidence uh, as a tool to detect the crime that must have happened that must have taken place so first of all in case you encounter blood as an evidence there will be certain criteria that you would take into consideration first of all you must know what is the forensic value of blood as an evidence it is always considered as a class evidence there are two type of evidence that we have learned about first is class evidence another one is individual evidence individual evidence is used to identify the individuality uh, if in case in uh, you know the blood group of uh, a person or a blood of ab positive blood group has been obtained from the scene of crime or from the crime scene so that is an individual evidence but in case only a blood sample or a droplet of blood is encountered from the scene of crime so you must not be very well aware whether it belongs to uh, a person or it belongs to an animal or of certain uh, questions might be there in your mind in some cases forensic serologists were able to link a single perpetrator to a blood stain look this is what i have explained a perpetrator a single individual perpetrator could be identified in case you know the blood group uh, whether it is rh positive rh negative and this things uh, of the blood group how to find this out and how these things are helpful in identification of uh, perpetrator will be discussed later on in this lecture first of all you should know how blood as an evidence is used full in cjs criminal justice system it can link victim and the suspect if blood belongs to the victim and it is found in the shirt of the suspect so by carrying out a blood uh, group examination or by carrying out the dna analysis you could be able to figure out whether the suspect was involved in the crime or not okay then blood stain pattern analysis entire theory could be figured out just by a droplet of the blood in carrying out the blood stain pattern analysis there are no substitute for it it is unique it has a known identity of its own now there are two type of tests that we will um, look through as the lecture proceeds first will be the presumptive tests and another would be confirmatory test we will cover phenolphthalein test also known as casel meyer test tmb lmg leucomelakite green test attempt at benzidine test then orthotolidine test and luminol test these are all the type of preliminary or primary or presumptive test then we have these two confirmatory tests most commonly asked in your examination that is takayama and tickman test this two will also be covered and these are the confirmatory test first of all you should know that what is a presumptive test there are some sensitive rapid and simple test which are presumptive test this test basically aim to uh, reduce the sample size in case you have obtained some sample from the scene of crime okay just take a hypothetical situation now it is a red color fluid to make sure whether it is blood or not you will carry some kind of pt means presumptive test if the presumptive test is passed on by this fluid and it is confirmed as blood now we will carry out the confirmatory test as now in case it is confirmed this the sample is blood so we will carry out the confirmatory test it gives you a clear cut idea without any doubt that the fluid is blood so colorimetry assay means detect heme in blood through the color reaction if certain color is found certain color is obtained then it is confirmed that it is blood because heme is kind of a biomarker for blood the only component which is present in blood the main component i should say that to uh, act as a biomarker is uh, nothing else but heme the redox reaction is the key reaction which takes place in all of these assay that we will be studying 
the fluorescence of blood somewhere ranges between 230 to 269 nanometer keep this data in mind in uv region now h2o2 hydrogen peroxide is used as an oxidant in presumptive test whereas heme act as a catalyst this is the most commonly asked question in ugc net examination now we will begin with phenolphthalein test phenolphthalein test is commonly known as kasselmeier test here is the reaction that follow up when the phenolphthalein test takes place or when we start the phenolphthalein test first of all we have to prepare the stock solution followed by the preparation of working solution let us have a look into it take 0.2 grams of phenolphthalein phenolphthalein is an indicator it is used to indicate whether the uh, fluid is whether the substance is acidic or basic by the phenomenon of color change then we will take hydrogen peroxide h2 o2 that to 20 g distilled water 100 ml zinc dust 20 g zinc dust is a reducing agent its main purpose is to keep the prepared solution in the reduced state then we will mix all these components and we will boil it till the solution turns pink and gets transparent as the solution get transparent and it turns pink we will filter it this is the stock solution that we would have obtained now we need the working solution we need 10 ml of ethanol then 2 ml of phenolphthalein stock that we have prepared above and distilled water that to 10 ml then ethanol 2 ml followed up by 3% of hydrogen peroxide which act as an oxidant now here are the steps that we will follow in order to carry out the phenolphthalein test the suspected stain will be taken and 2 to 3 drop of ethanol will be added to it okay for an example this is the suspected stain we will add some 2 to 3 drops of ethanol to it then 2 to 3 drop of working solution of ethanol phenolphthalein solution will be added to it followed up by 3% of h2o2 what is h2o2 an oxidant hydrogen peroxide act here as an oxidant then finally wait for some time and result would be obtained an intense pink color an intense pink color gives the uh, positive result for the blood now how does it happen here are the steps phenolphthalein will react with NaOH that is base in the presence of base phenolphthalein gives pink color now zinc oxide keeps it in reduced state and it will turn the entire pink solution colorless this colorlessness shows that the solution is in reduced form now when we get the solution in reduced form all the steps will be followed by intense pink color is obtained which shows that the blood may be present we could not say sure shot that the blood is present in the solution because this is a presumptive test not a confirmatory test in nature